Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the University of Washington's annual freshman convocation. The convocation will begin with the procession of the faculty, deans, president, regents, administrative leadership, and honored guests. The 2017 University of Washington Freshman Convocation will be opened with the singing of the Star Spangled Banner by Catherine Leland. Ms. Leland is a freshman and plans to major in voice. She will be accompanied by the University Wind Ensemble conducted by Professor Timothy Saltzman of the School of Music. The audience will please rise. Please be seated. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. That's more like it. 
My name is Joseph Jaynes, the University Marshal. And when I'm not in this get up, I'm an associate professor in the information school. But as University Marshal, I have the honor and privilege of offering you our first words of official greeting. It also means I am your first professor. So I get to give you your first lesson. First of all, how many of us are first generation college students? I am too. And once I sat where you sit, in a different time and place, at a convocation on my first day. And my strongest memory of that day was all of this, the symbols and signs you see all around us. Look up around there, and you'll see banners representing each of the university schools and colleges arranged in historical order, beginning with the College of Arts and Sciences and going all the way right round to the School of Public Health. At commencement, some of you will be carrying these banners, and the rest of you will march in behind them according to your school or college. You'll also see these four ionic columns. They are replicas of the original columns that graced the facade of the university's first building, opened over a century and a half ago in 1861 on a rise in what is now downtown Seattle, but then in an unincorporated village of fewer than 200 people, a testament to the foresight of the citizens of territorial Washington. These columns will be prominently displayed on the commencement stage in Husky Stadium when you march up to them to graduate. The columns and the banners are cherished parts of our university's traditions. But it isn't just this university's life and traditions you're joining. You are entering into the life and traditions of an ancient and continuous body of learning that goes back centuries all over the world. That connection is symbolized in the medieval caps and gowns we wear on these occasions, the president's medallion, and of course, by the special ritual object the university marshal carries in our ceremonies, the mace. The mace is an ancient symbol of authority that reminds us that universities are custodians both of enduring traditions of learning and of the power they bestow on those who come to learn. The University of Washington mace is embellished with finely wrought metal sculptures of the university seal and of Denny Hall, and is topped by a graceful rendition of Drumheller Fountain. The mace and all these other festive ritual ingredients are simply symbolic reminders of the university's special way of uniting where we are now with what has brought us here so that we can get a good fix on where we are going. Today, we both honor the past and conjure up the future, which brings me to the nature of the event itself. Occasions like this inspire us to pause and reflect on where we are now, what's gone before, and where we are going. At this moment, you are ending one chapter of your lives and starting another. So right now, stop and mark the significance of your arrival at this place in this time and then think about your goals and what you want to do going forward. Another function of ceremonies can be found in the word convocation itself. It derives from a Latin word that means a calling together. Today, we call together our incoming students, their families and friends, so that we may celebrate with you the beginning of your university education and welcome you all to membership in our campus community. By calling all of us, students, faculty, families and friends together in this place, we are underscoring a point of cooperation and mutual commitment. You, our new students, and your parents and relatives are now members of the University of Washington family, so we're all in this together. Like families everywhere, we will help each other, support each other, occasionally disagree, even fight now and then, but ultimately come together in our devotion to the project of creating a better world and a better future. I can't tell you how much I envy the opportunity and adventure that lies before you, and I can't wait to see the marvels you produce. And one more thing, when you really need help and you really get stuck, ask a librarian. You're welcome. I wish you all the best.
It is now my very great pleasure to introduce to you the President of the University of Washington, Dr. Anamari Kause. Hello, class of 2021. Welcome to the University of Washington. I am absolutely thrilled to welcome you to our community, now your community. I know you've worked hard to get here, so in all the adventures and discoveries that lie ahead, never forget that you earned your place here. Your voice matters to this community, and you can be absolutely confident no matter what, you belong here. Now, you're about to encounter a very lively learning environment. One of the things about this university is that cutting-edge scholarship informs the work that you'll do in the classroom. The University of Washington is known for its research and scholarship into everything from fish genes to quantum physics. Now, recently, the UW's Institute for, Ra for Learning and Brain Sciences, that we know as iLabs, produced some very interesting research. They found that very young children, as young as four, when they were swinging in unison together on a swing set, that that developed the cognitive skills that helped them to cooperate and work on tasks together. Think of it, the simple, joyful feeling of swinging in sync with another person actually enhances the brain's ability to collaborate and to work with others and be part of an effective team. In more than 30 years that I've been working here and teaching here at the university, I've come to see how swinging in unison is fundamental to what we do here. We see it in the coordinated sweep of a crew boat's oars, and I hope you do go out and watch some of our crew. We see it in the academic and learning collaborations between people who are so attuned to each other. It almost seems as if they're reading each other's minds. Whatever your passion, the University of Washington is a place where you will find others who share and who can amplify the impact that you have on the world. That's one of the wonderful things of being in a large university. There are members of your tribe here. It's just a question of taking a little bit of time and finding them. So here's my advice, a little bit of advice on how to find your own swing. First of all, I want to urge you all to take worthwhile risks. They might be intellectual. Take a class that, in a subject that you never thought would be interesting to you, but hey, maybe it'll end up appealing to you. It'll stretch you. You'll meet different kinds of people. I'll talk more about this, but join a club. We have lots of them here. But for those of you that can, take physical risks as well. Believe it or not, there are two mountains within about three hours of here that even I can climb. So <laughs> get out there. But as Marshall Jane said, you know, if you take risks, if you stretch yourself, if you push yourself, which is what it's all about, you will have setbacks. There are times when you will feel that maybe you failed at something you didn't do. At those times, ask for help. Ask for help when you need it. Heck, ask for help even when you don't need it. Or when you aren't sure whether you need it or not. Every one of you arrived here with different experiences, knowledge and perspectives. You'll all have questions and face uncertainties along the way. Embrace the idea that asking for help is not a feature, it's not a bug, as they say. Your professors, our student life staff, in fact, Pretty much everybody who works at the university, as well as our friends, our alumni, our donors, our policymakers who support the university, in some way or other, they have an investment in your success. And so they probably are ready to help you achieve it. So don't be shy. Asking for help is not a sign of weakness. In fact, it's a sign of strength and look for opportunities to collaborate. At the university, we aspire to have the greatest possible impact on the state, on the world that we serve. 
but we can only get there by working together. So seek out mentors in your academic major. Work together with your classmates on a project. Maybe you want to start up a business while you're here. Join a sports team. Write for the daily. Get involved with student government. We have 800 registered student organizations that speak to you. One of them is probably of interest to you. Whatever you do in life, you'll need other people. And even more important, they will need you. So learn how to be there for them, too. Finally, be a good listener. Each of you has a unique, a wonderful, a powerful voice. That means not only that you have something to say, it also means your neighbor has something to say that's worth hearing. So I urge you to get to know your neighbor and find out what they have to say. In fact, let's start right now. Say hello to the person next to you, and if you've got your phone, and I bet you almost all of you do, or at least half of you do, why don't you talk to them and take a, take a selfie with him or her and tweet it to the hashtag NewHuskies2017. Osman, please come up and take a selfie with me. There you are. Osman is our student body president. You'll be hearing from him in a minute. Today's the first step in your new journey to your parents, family, friends, supporter. The university thanks you. Your student is here today in part because of you and the way that you've supported them. In many cases, you were their first collaborator, their first support system. You helped them climb the ladder that brought them to this great institution. Students, as you take your next steps, remember that the path forward will not and should not be a straight line. Okay, a straight line may sound pretty good, but it makes for a boring journey. <laughs> Give yourself the freedom to take twists and turns, to take the road less traveled, to double back, to run, to walk, and even sometimes to crawl if that's what you need. Learn from your mistakes. Celebrate your victories. Be kind and take good care of each other. We're in this together and you're all in it with us, and we're all in it with you. Welcome to the University of Washington. And ask a librarian. I'd like to take a moment to introduce our stage party, beginning with our regents. The university's Board of Regents consists of 10 citizens of the state who are appointed by the governor and confirmed by the state senate. These dedicated men and women devote many hours each year to the welfare of the university, and we are enormously grateful to them. Five of our regents are with us this morning, and I would like to introduce them at this time. Please hold your applause until, we've until we have introduced them all. Regent William Ayer, Regent Joel Beneliel, Regent Constance Rice, Regent Rogelio Riojas, and Regent Jarrett Reed Goddard, the student member of the board. Ladies and gentlemen, the regents of the University of Washington. Also seated with us on the platform are the deans of the university's 16 schools and colleges, the senior administrative leadership of the university, faculty members, and representatives from the student body, the faculty senate, and the alumni association. Would all of you please stand and allow us to thank you for being with us. And now, I'd like to introduce to you the man who oversees all of the units on campus that will serve as your support crew on this extraordinary journey you're about to begin. As the Vice President for Student Life, he oversees such diverse areas as food and housing, 
got to start somewhere. Counseling and career centers, student publications, our recreational sports programs, and the center of student life and student government, the Husky Union Building, which we all know as the hub. It's a huge responsibility, and we are very privileged to have a uniquely qualified leader in this role. Please join me in welcoming our Vice President for Student Life, Dr. Denzel Sweet. Good morning, Huskies. You cannot imagine how delighted we are to welcome you all to this new academic year. All of us here on stage and indeed throughout the university have been busily preparing for your arrival. And now that the time has finally come, we are beyond excited. And as I gaze out at all of you, I am taken back to my first days in college. And I do realize from your perspective, that's just after the earth cooled. <laughs> um, however, <laughs> ooh. <laughs> However, it was not so long ago that I have forgotten one of the most important lessons I learned. A favorite professor of mine said something that has stuck with me and has served me well in the years since. He was fond of challenging his students to find the error in what you support and the truth in what you oppose. Let me say that again. Find the error in what you support and the truth in what you oppose. Your experiences over the next few years will be remarkable. However, they will not be without challenges, and I think you will agree with me when I say that it takes both universities and adversities to teach us everything we need to learn in life. And those challenges will be made infinitely easier to bear if you can take a balanced approach to issues. In other words, if you can accept the challenge of seeking out the error in what you support and the truth in what you oppose. We in the Division of Student Life are here to help guide and support you as you embark on this transformational journey of discovery. We are here to listen when times get tough, to help you with career choices, and to make sure that you have a friendly and inclusive community within the larger university environment. We also offer a wide variety of activities designed to enhance your personal health, which we know is important to your overall academic success. In conjunction with our partners in the Office of Minority Affairs and Diversity and in Undergraduate Academic Affairs, Student Life serves as the hub of many of the activities that both complement your academic pursuits and help you find and build community with others. But make no mistake, your academic pursuits must remain your number one priority. However, you must also get involved. And please trust me when I tell you that your UW experience, it will be incomplete if all you do is go to class, go home, and study all night. We know from years of experience and research that students just like you who participate in the fabric of campus life, who join clubs and organizations, who get involved with their residence hall association, or simply attend events that take place on campus, these students graduate at higher rates, they are more satisfied with the college experience, they have better grades, and they are less likely to stop out. My message here for you this morning is that whatever your course of study or whatever your passion, as the president said, just remember why you are here. You, like the Huskies who came before you, are the next leaders of government, society, industry, of your local communities, and of the world. To achieve the greatness that's within you, it is critically important that you do well in the classroom, but also that you get involved with your, with your university at every level, starting with the faculty, including our wonderful staff and your fellow students. And speaking of your fellow students, I would like to introduce to you someone who has challenged himself to succeed both academically and in significant leadership roles. He is a neurobiology major and is beginning his senior year as president of the Associated Students of the University of Washington. Please join me in welcoming back your student body president, Osman Salahuddin.
Good morning, everyone, and welcome, class of 2021. My name is Osman Salahuddin, and I have the honor of serving as your student body president. Now, as I was preparing for this speech, it got me thinking back to the time when I was in your place as an incoming freshman. When I received my gold envelope in the mail, I was ecstatic. I ran around the house in joy. I jumped up and down and smiled proudly, knowing that I would be a Husky. And when the rush finally wore off, I sat down and just envisioned how the next four years of my life would go at one of the greatest universities in the world. I was determined to follow a path and do my best to succeed. So when the first year of freshman year rolled around and I was sitting in Hitchcock Hall in my intro level chemistry class, I was so ready to pursue all of my dreams. I was surrounded by 600 of the smartest students and I was prepared to learn all about chemical reactions with them. I had my notebook and five different colors of pens out, ready to take notes and get started. The bell rang and the professor came out and began the lecture and I fell asleep. <laughs> yeah, within five minutes of getting started on my journey, I had dozed off through my entire first lecture. So that's what's truly great about this university. <laughs> yeah, I can wholeheartedly say that we have the most comfortable, nap-friendly lecture chairs in the entire world. But honestly, what I'm really trying to convey with this story is that you don't have to be perfect. This is a journey that you just can't plan out, like I had once thought. College will throw so many curveballs at you that sometimes you won't know what to do. Your plans might not end up going as expected, and that's okay. It's okay that you don't have it all figured out, and it's okay to feel a little lost sometimes. But through all of this struggle, the most important thing that you can do is use all of the time that you have to explore and discover anything and everything. Take a bunch of different classes. Just talk to as many people as you can. Join as many clubs as you're interested in. Put yourself out there and have new experiences that might not make any sense at first. There's no one right way to succeed at the University of Washington, so you can't rely on a step-by-step -step plan or any formula for success because something perfect like that just doesn't exist. In order to succeed here at the University of Washington, you must take risks. And the truth about it all is that you will make mistakes, but that's okay. Now, everyone says that college flies by really quickly and they're absolutely right, sort of. Because let's assume you're at the university seven days of the week, 11 weeks and a quarter, three quarters in a year for four years. That means you have 924 days to make a difference on this campus. And every single day presents a brand new opportunity to try and make the world a better place. Now, I'm not saying you'll wake up one day and find the cure to cancer, though if you do get involved with the research at the university, you have the opportunity to do that. You won't code the next Facebook in just one day, though if you get involved with the amazing computer science and informatics departments at the university, you have the opportunity to do that. And you definitely won't be able to achieve world peace overnight, but if you get involved with the world-class faculty here at the university, you have the opportunity to do that. And in the words of one of the greatest visionaries and icons of our generation, DJ Khaled, <laughs> you have to work hard for more success. The key is, never fold. You all have the potential to make an amazing impact on this campus. Your words, your thoughts, your ideas, and especially your actions will guide you to do great things. It's not going to be a perfect four years. What matters now is that you are here, in this room, taking the first step towards the most exciting time of your life. So be here, be present, be engaged. Everyone here in this building, me, the accomplished people on stage, your friends and family in the audience, and the people next to you are here with you. We're all ready to embark on this journey alongside you as you discover yourself. And the only question is, what are you going to do with this opportunity? Thank you. you. One of the things we want to do today is to introduce you, the freshman class and entering students, to our faculty and deans and to the university community. At the same time, we also want to tell them a little bit about you. There is likely no one more familiar with the freshman class than our dean of undergraduate academic affairs, Dr. Ed Taylor. 
Dean Taylor is a graduate of Gonzaga University and received his PhD from the University of Washington. He's been a member of the faculty in the College of Education since 1994. Please join me in welcoming Dean Ed Taylor. I want to introduce you to each other. But, but first, I want to speak to the gravity of the moment and speak to parents and loved ones and families and brothers and sisters. Because if we've designed this well, in, in the matter of a few hours, something really powerful is going to happen. They will go one direction in search of learning and community engagement. And if we've done this right, you will all go home. <laughs> Most of you will go home. And in that space in between, you will have a moment to say something to your family, to these young people. And you have a moment to decide what it is you're going to say to them and how you're going to say it. I'm, I'm reminded of that moment several years ago that I had with my own son. And I came prepared, actually, when I was dropping him off. I had quotes in my pocket. I had three by five cards with quotes. <laughs> I had one from Socrates. It's not just life, but the good life that is to be chiefly valued. I had one from Franklin Delano Roosevelt. When you reach the end of your rope, tie a knot in it and just hang on. Education is the most powerful weapon that can be used to change the world. I had Nelson Mandela at my disposal. I had access to literature. I had access to music as a metaphor from Tchaikovsky to the Motown era, which some of us are from. I even had the music from a rental car that I had that morning. Ice, ice, baby, <laughs> vanilla ice. I could even use that, I thought to myself. I had the inspiration of dozens like many of you, dozens and dozens of children's authors of the books that I had read to that child. Unless someone like you, and there's that child, unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot about an awful lot, nothing is going to get better. It's not, Dr. Seuss. With all of this and more at my disposal, cards in my pocket, I reached that moment where it was time to send him off, time to make that transition. And so I held him. I held my son, I hugged him, and, and it was a hug like I'd never had with him before, and I looked him in the eye, and I chose these words. I said, son, when you wake up in the morning, and I'm not there, don't forget to brush your teeth. <laughs> I reached for the cards, and I choked, and I went with dental hygiene. <laughs> I'm going to suggest that you not. <laughs> I'm going to suggest that if you choke up, as I, as I did, just go to something familiar. Just say, I, I love you, and say it over and over and over again. Hug them and feel them like you've never felt them before. And when you've said it enough to the point that they bristle, turn to somebody else's child and say, we love you, and hug them if you so will. <laughs> and choke up as you so please. But don't go with hygiene. I want to recognize this, this incoming class. Here are a few things about you. 44,000 students applied to the University of Washington, out of which 6,765 will be in your class. 54% will be female, and 45% will be male. I don't know what that means, but fellas, <laughs> step it up a little bit. <laughs> OK, so we're, we're not competitive this way, but last year's incoming GPA was 3.78, which is awfully good. Yours, 3.79. Check that out. Check that out. Check that out. Now, now don't, don't get arrogant, because that had very little to do with you getting into the university. And frankly, how you treated your teachers, how you treated your grandmother, how you treated your friends and neighbors, how you will engage in the world, your sense of service, may well have made the difference not your GPA, but you did OK. <laughs> Here are a few other things about your class. There are 54 Emilys in your class. 
36 Hannahs, but only one from Prairie, Washington. 35 Elizabeths, 31 Megans, 51 Emmas. Make that 31 Emmas. And you can cheer if you hear your name, and you can frown at me if you don't hear yours. Zitlani from Gilroy is in the back. There's only one Zitlani here. <laughs> and family. <laughs> Andrew, there are 60 Andrews, 46 Ryans, 43 Alexanders, 36 Matthews, 35 Michaels. Junhapreet is seated here with you, so is Prentice Mosley. Grayson and Dylan sitting together from Puyallup are in the back. 108 students, well, 4,400 students from the state of Washington all total. And some of you nearby, 80 from Newport High School, 93 from Skyline, 65 from Garfield, 62 Franklin Quakers here, 108 students from Spokane Area High Schools who will join one student from Chief Leshai High School in Puyallup, 47 students from Cleveland, 30, 39 from Juanita High School, 37 from Chief South International High School will join one student from Warden one student from Colfax, and one student all cleaned up from Soap Lake. <laughs> there are 21 students who were homeschooled. 21, where are my homeschoolers, yep. <laughs> Mostly from Washington high schools, I just mentioned. We hold a special recognition, however, for those six students who saw the purple light, left Pullman, Washington, <laughs> traveled in search of higher learning and you're here. And joining 97 students who waddled across the Oregon border. <laughs> you are from Seattle Central Community College, from Bellevue Community College, from Green River. 695 of you surfed up from California. <laughs> Lindy from Santa Rosa right there. Hi, Lindy. Claire and Ariel from San Jose, 68 moseyed up from deep in the heart of Texas. We're glad to have you here. We hope that your families are safe and we're glad to have you here. You come from all over the country, 47 from New York, 42 from Colorado, 42 from Pennsylvania, 40 from Illinois, 37 from the sunshine state of Florida, and you come from all over the world. You're from India, Taiwan, South Korea, Indonesia, Thailand, Canada, Vietnam, Singapore, Malaysia, Saudi Arabia, Hong Kong. You're from schools from as far as South Africa. And though we are many, we are now one. I asked, speaking of three by five cards in the course of the summer, I asked some of the students to just write a note for their parents. Just something you might say, knowing that you're likely to choke up, but they may not. So here are a few of the things that they wrote to you. Dear mom, you taught me to ride a bike. You taught me to drive a car, sort of. I don't know what sort of means. <laughs> you cheered me on as I taught myself algebra. You taught me to be a loyal friend. Mom, you gave me the greatest gift I could ask for, to love myself. I love you. Dearest dad, remember that time my sophomore year when I told you somebody bumped into the car in the driveway in the middle of the night? and left a dent in the bumper? Well, it was me, and I'm truly sorry. The good news is I'm a husky. <laughs> Dear fam, which I presume is short for family, you have been shopping for me to go to the UW for weeks now. My last count, there were 25 pairs of socks and 52 tubes of toothpaste as of yesterday, I'm guessing you're going to ask me to brush my teeth before I go. I'll be smiling a lot. Thank you, and I love you. Dear bro, don't even think about it. Stay in your own room. <laughs> Papa, I'm, I'm proud to be your grandson. You didn't waste a second of life caring for me, and I will not waste a second at my time at UW. I love you. Mom and Dad. You told me that if I stuck with school and trusted you that someday I would be the first in our family to go to college, we did it. 
Soon, we will be the first to graduate from the University of Washington. I love you. Let me ask this of all of you standing and family members. Please stand. You all stay seated, but family members and audience, please stand, including the stage. And take a look at this class. I want you to raise your hands. And if you are stuck for words, let's say this. Look at them in whatever language you choose. Let us say, I love you, and let's applaud and welcome in this incoming class with as much verb as we can. Say it together. I love you. We love you. Welcome to the university. gets me every dang year. <laughs> well, we've learned a good deal about you, our incoming class, and now we'd like to introduce you to some of the faculty members who will be your teachers and mentors for the next four years. They are experts in nearly every imaginable field, and every day they are engaged in research and scholarship that is impacting our world in profound ways. The person who knows our faculty best is our provost, Jerry Baldesty. The provost is the university's chief academic officer and the person who works most closely with the deans and the faculty to help shape your academic experience. Dr. Baldessi is a professor of communications and distinguished teaching award winner and has been on the faculty of the University of Washington for nearly 40 years. Please join me in welcoming our provost, Jerry Baldessi. Welcome, uh, on behalf of the faculty, welcome to the University of Washington. I'd like to introduce you to our faculty, some of whom are sitting behind me, and greeted you when you came in this morning. Our faculty, first of all, are recognized internationally for the quality of their work. The, home is, the university is home to seven Nobel Prize winners, 15 MacArthur so-called genius fellows, 171 members, of the National Academies of Sciences, Engineering, and Medicine, and 171, 172 fellows of the American Association for the Advancement of Science. And they are a key to your experience here. Over the next few years, earning your degree will be just part of what you'll do at UW. Your student experience, what we call the Husky experience, will encompass the wide range of opportunities we offer inside and beyond the classroom and lab. These experiences, which will be unique to each one of you, will help you discover your passions in life and work. You'll develop a sophisticated approach to the world, and most of all, you will gain the skills you need to lead a meaningful and rewarding career in life after you graduate. Your Husky experience can include volunteer work, internships, study abroad, leadership programs, and undergraduate research. And our faculty are here to help you gain the best possible education and a superb Husky experience. One way they do this is by challenging students to achieve more than you might think is possible, while at the same time creating a learning environment in which students can successfully meet that challenge. A great example of this comes from the Department of Communication, where principal lecturer Matt McGarity teaches the introduction to public speaking class. As many of you probably know, public speaking can be pretty intimidating. But Matt has built a supportive classroom where students help one another. Each speech assignment builds on the previous one. And by the end of the class, students deliver compelling speeches out on Red Square in the middle of campus in front of public audiences, rain or shine. And they do it with zest. In 2005, Matt also started a public speaking center where undergraduate tutors provide one-on-one -on -one, one -on -one speech coaching to anybody at UW. Many of these tutors have gone on to careers as communication specialists and congressional speech writers. Dr. McGarry is here with, me, with us today. Dr. McGarry, would you please stand?
Another example of teaching that ensures student success comes from Assistant Professor of History, Barbella Bechlimon. Dr. Bechlimon teaches the history of modern Middle East. She makes her large classes seem small. Her lectures are conversations with questions and brainstorming. She asks students about their most rewarding educational experiences and uses those answers to best work with their learning styles. Classroom conversations carry over into her office hours, email exchanges, and even beyond the end of the course. She encourages students to, re to relate class materials to their own lives, interests, and skills. One of her students, Chelsea Cooper, was a McNair scholar and a member of the inaugural Husky 100 group. And Chelsea is now pursuing a master's degree focused on the Middle East, and she credits her professor for helping her see that as a potential. Dr. Bechimo, would you please stand? <laughs> Dr. Bechimo's work touches on another area that guides us at the University of Washington, the realization that we're all part of a global community. In fact, as we're meeting here right now, a number of our students are in Morocco, studying under the mentorship of Dr. Ruth Huey, a lecturer in the Foster School of Business, and Dr. Christy Strauss, a lecturer in the College of Environment's Environmental Studies program. They are participating in a program developed by Dr. Huey in which students learn about sustainable agriculture by working with a Moroccan organic certification company, a Moroccan government agricultural agency, and a nonprofit organization, the High Atlas Foundation. Our students will hike for three days into some of the poorest communities in Morocco, meet with farmers, talk with them about agriculture in their lives, and discuss potential ways to add value to their crops for export. And finally, our students will write a grant to bring needed money to help the farmers start export businesses. As you can see, learning opportunities at the University of Washington extend far beyond this campus. Each year, thousands of our students expand their worldview to study abroad. You may spend a quarter studying with a faculty member in India, travel to the Middle East, or study art, culture, or sociology at the UW study centers in Rome, Italy, or Lyon, Spain. All of these are just a few of the many opportunities you will have to create your own Husky experience. They're provided to you by professors who are among leading scholars and research in the world and who are delighted that you are here. Even as a first-year student, now, even as a first-year student, you can be involved in the university's mission of research, teaching, and public service. So don't wait. Jump in. Education is interactive. We will help you, but you need to meet us halfway. So to do this, first, and this is, this is true, go to class. <laughs> I used to always say I had three bits of advice for students. Go to class, go to class, go to class. Get to know your professors. Visit during their office hours. Don't be shy. Ask them about their research, their writing, their teaching. Ask their advice. Your professors will help you make the most of your time as a student here at the University of Washington. You are the reason they are here. So welcome. Today I also have the additional privilege and honor of introducing a teacher who has long been a student favorite at the University of Washington. Dr. Sarah Keller is a professor in the Department of Chemistry and an adjunct professor in the Physics Department. She earned, she earned her PhD from Princeton University in 1995 and joined the University of Washington faculty in 2000. Her research focuses on the field of soft condensed matter, which includes gels, aerosols, and fluids. Her research has been internationally recognized by the Avanti Award from the Biophysical Society, a group of more than 9,000 researchers. At the University of Washington, doctor's teaching, doc, Dr. Keller's teaching and mentoring have been recognized with the Distinguished Teaching Award in 2006, by the Department of Chemistry's Outstanding Teaching Award in 2004, and by the UW Postdoctoral Association's 2012 Mentor Award. Please join me 
in welcoming Dr. Sarah Keller. Now I know you're worried. I'm a chemistry professor, and this is your first chemistry lecture, Osman. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> and I have, I've counted, I've seen nine huge yawns, those kinds that are like, Rah. so I'd like to invite you all to, you know, we got the last one here, let's have a stretch, everybody, and we're going to make it through the home stretch. Okay, ha ha. On behalf of all faculty at the University of Washington, my job is to welcome every one of you and your family and your friends who are with you. I am a, a professor in the departments of chemistry and physics, but I would like to say in every department at the University of Washington, professors are tremendously excited to welcome you into our classrooms this fall. Y you might wonder, uh, how can we manage to be so excited year upon year to meet a new class of students? You might skeptically think, can she really be so excited to listen to herself explain the concepts of introductory chemistry yet again? <laughs> a key to you understanding what makes teaching intellectually interesting for faculty is not to consider what the faculty bring to the classroom, but rather to consider what the students bring. In particular, students bring their questions. We faculty cannot wait to hear your questions. So, why is it that UW faculty are so eager to hear your questions? Clearly, we are dedicated to you learning as much as possible while you are here at UW. You will simply learn faster when you ask questions. We are expecting you to ask questions. Ask hard questions, ask easy questions, ask conceptual questions, ask procedural questions, ask as many questions as possible. If you're initially feeling a little shy, a bit overwhelmed to ask questions of your professor, warm up by asking questions of your classmates, your teaching assistants, and then start asking questions in class and of your instructors. Now, look, I don't want to be glib about this. As much as I am positive that it is essential for you to ask questions, I know that there are serious reasons why it might take a while for every student to become comfortable asking those questions. And those reasons are going to differ for every student. And as an example, let me share my own story. When I was an undergraduate earning a degree in physics, it was common for me to be the only woman in a laboratory. And sometimes when I had a question that I knew was naive, I was worried that the men around me would conclude that asking naive questions was an attribute of all women, not just an attribute of me as an individual, and I am fine with people knowing that I ask naive questions. I still ask naive questions. However, I know so many brilliant, genius women in science that I'm uncomfortable with anyone assuming that all women in science ask naive questions. Okay. So a key to me becoming comfortable and asking my naive questions has been for me to realize that if I don't, ask my questions, the scientists around me, of any gender, will assume that I'm not interested, that I don't care, that I'm not willing to take a risk in order to expand my knowledge. So we, the faculty at UW, are fully expecting students to ask naive, uninformed, and even sometimes stupid questions. <laughs> when you do so, we will be overjoyed <laughs> because we will then know that you care as deeply about your education as we care deeply about your education. Moreover, we faculty, we've met a lot of students. 
So look around you. Look at what a vibrant and large class you are part of. You can be guaranteed that you are not the first woman in physics, nor the first person of your particular race, religion, orientation, or immigrant status that UW faculty have met. When you ask your naive question, UW faculty simply cannot attribute your question to whatever demographic you represent. We welcome each and every one of you as individuals. We faculty have a, a, a not so secret goal in you asking questions. We want you to grow so used to asking questions that you continue asking questions after you graduate from UW, after you walk across the stage in your academic robes. Indeed, our goal is for you to be lifelong learners. The most valuable skill that we can give you at UW is the skill of learning how to learn. We want you to hone your aptitude for asking questions so that when you enter the workforce, you will be prepared for a changing job market. Now, so far, all of my points have addressed how you, the students, will grow by asking questions. And now, speaking from a, a more selfish and personal side, what a faculty get out of you asking questions. You know, beyond our satisfaction of your intellectual growth, which is important. <laughs> well, I'm a lifelong learner too. Of course, you knew that just by looking at me. I had to graduate from 22nd grade for the satisfaction to dress like a giant orange and black Oriole. <laughs> I, I must love learning. <laughs> so what do I want to learn? Well, first I want to learn to, to teach better. I cannot tell if I am teaching you effectively unless you students ask questions. I welcome even the questions that are the most embarrassingly, cringingly basic. Because those questions will tell me if I have overestimated or underestimated your preparation for my class. Your questions also tell me whether I've correctly conveyed concepts to you. Well, second, I want students to ask questions because I adore chemistry and physics so much. I am so in love with them that I want to understand them down to their fundamental roots. Often, when students ask questions that seem simple, those questions actually lead to deep topics of how we know what we know. Third, I want students to ask questions because I'm a practicing scientist, I am happiest when I am discovering exciting scientific results in my laboratory. An amazing feature of attending the University of Washington as a student is that most of your professors are practicing experts in their fields. Your history teachers are published historians. Your engineering teachers design and build things. Your art teachers exhibit their art. And your science teachers, we make discoveries in our own laboratories. When you hear on the news, scientists at the University of Washington have found, who do you think that is? That's us. <laughs> you can ask us questions like, what should I do to prepare for a career as a professional historian or professional engineer or professional artist or professional scientist, and we will know because we are those things. Even more exciting, as several speakers have mentioned, is the fact that students at the University of Washington have the opportunity to get involved in cutting edge research at all levels of their education, from first year freshmen to advanced graduate students. When I'm looking to hire an undergraduate to work in my laboratory as a research assistant, I hire the undergraduate who's the most curious, who asks the most questions. Hard questions, easy questions, conceptual questions, procedural questions, as many questions as possible. Those are the ones I want to hire. I care about questions because they lead to discoveries, and that is what UW faculty are all about. All across the university, no matter what your intended major is, you will find faculty who are tremendously excited about expanding the limits of our knowledge. 
boldly doing research that no one has done before. And we're especially looking forward to doing it with you. So welcome to the University of Washington. Am I the only one on stage who wants to take chemistry now? <laughs> Will you be my study buddy if we do it? <laughs> That'd be a hoot, actually, but we won't do that to poor Sarah. Uh, thank you, Sarah. That was extraordinary. The University of Washington Men's Glee Club, under the direction of assistant conductor Alonzo Brizuela, will now teach us the school song, Rise Up With Pride for Washington. They will first sing the song a cappella, and then we will all sing it with the University Wind Ensemble. And a round of applause for the Wind Ensemble. <laughs> the lyrics to the song are printed on the last page of your program. Please rise. Integrity forever shine from lake to shore, your light upon us Please be seated. What a magnificent way to begin the academic year. On behalf of the entire University of Washington community, I'd like to thank our honored guests and all of you who have made this day so special. We request the audience to remain seated until the completion of the recession by the platform party. The 2017, the 2017 freshman convocation of the University of Washington is now closed. Thank you. 